gangsta. You know what to do. Don't risk my reputation. Take her to the village. Please, friends, enemy, let us communicate in peace. From where do you come? I walk the earth night after night, watching the human circus. And I spotted one man. He's like an angel. I want him. There is none like him on the earth. Blameless and upright man. One who fears me and shuns evil. It is always about fear with you, isn't it? And he hasn't even felt or seen real evil. Your velvet hand protects him. His work, his life, his own. You let him go for a while. Behold, all he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. He will hold fast to integrity, even though you have incited me against him to destroy him without just cause. Skin for skin, surely. I will show him pain. I'll make him cry like a baby. And I'll make him bleed. If you allow me that freedom, I believe he will curse you and turn his bloody back on you. Behold, he is in your hand. But spare his life. We fight for the souls of mankind. One soul.
I realize that for many, I may seem to be a man of too young an age to be given such a responsibility as preaching the word of God. I ask all of you to remember that the great apostle Paul put his trust in another young man named Timothy. What I promise all of you is that I am a man of the word. And what I promise all of you is that anything that I speak of here will be led by this. I have no doubt that if I become diverted from this, God's word, you will all be quick to challenge me. I ask for your, your grace and your patience as I, God willing, find the right path forward for this wonderful and faithful parish. Now, may we uh, all be standing as Mrs. Jenkins plays from the hymn book, Amazing Grace. Excellent sermon, Reverend. Thank you. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I'll be looking forward to seeing you next week. Wonderful. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Well, Reverend, I must say, I think your first sermon was a great success. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Jenkins. And may I say that your performance on that organ tonight was like poetry to the congregation's ears? <laughs> oh, you are a darling. Do you know, I think you might just be what this small parish needs, a, a bit of youth. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say so. I'm not quite sure that everyone would agree with you. Oh, they will, my boy. You'll win them round. A handsome young man like you. Yeah. And the last guy we had was my age. You're right bored, if you ask me. <laughs> now, I'll see you on two to the tea and cake, right? How can I refuse such a wonderful invitation? <laughs> Cheerio, Reverend. Good night, Mrs. Jenkins. Have you forgotten, Mrs. Jenkins? Oh, hello. Can I help you? I need to speak to the Reverend. What's me? Please come in, you're freezing. Anything you like in there? I was just looking. Do you play? The organ? No. Well, <laughs> perhaps chopsticks, but that's about it. Do you like the tea? Actually, tonight's my, my first night, but yes, I do. So, uh, what brings a, a girl like you out on a night like this? To speak to you. Can I help? I don't think so. My burden weighs heavily on me. What weighs heavily? Do you like the way I look? Why? I can tell you do, the way you are looking at me. Tempted? They're all tempted, but temptation doesn't always lead to... To what? To sin. I was hoping you'd try and take advantage of me. Why? Because it would have made it easier. Made what easier? I'm just a messenger, Reverend. You are a good man. But sometimes, even good men are tested.
like sweet food to me, either my request might come to pass, and God will grant my life more than God will want to crush me. Yes, it's a dream. Is it? Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Dreams are always shades of green. What's going on? Did you get my note? What note? In the hymn book, of course. Yes. And? And what? What did you think? You meant the book of Job, right? confused. Do not be frightened, Reverend. You are a righteous man. Embrace it. Embrace it. There, so I, I overslept this morning. I've been dreadfully worried about you. <sighs> I'm coming. Myself. What is it, the flu? Something like that. Well, my boy, you look like you could use a hot, sweet cup of tea. <laughs> Quite. Oh dear, oh dear. You haven't even unpacked yet. The coffee machine's out. Oh, tea is what you need. Do you have a kettle? In um, one of the boxes, I think. So I don't have any. Tea bags. Well, it's just as well I stopped at the shop on my way here then, isn't it? Now sit yourself down, dear. You need looking after. <coughs> One measly saucepan. Now the last reverend was a tight old bugger. Pardon my French reverend. You're pardoned. <laughs> Poorly, you? I was quite worried about you. <laughs> but why? Well, just because you said you'd be popping around for tea and cake. You know, I appreciate you're a busy man, but it was just that I didn't hear from you. I'm sorry I was going to pop around this afternoon. I didn't realise you meant this morning. Oh, of course, dear. You're welcome any time. <laughs> but I thought you were coming on Tuesday. But it is... You see, on Friday afternoons, I usually play dominoes down the pub. Are you okay? You look quite peculiar. <coughs> Let me get you that tea. Good. <coughs> what do you 
I've been reading. Sorry? Uh, the Book of Job, actually. Oh, strange old book, that one. What makes you say that? Well, a poor fellow, he can't win, really, can he? <laughs> I've never really looked at it like that. No, it's a book that's always confused me, that one. I mean, he's, he's a bloody saint, isn't he? Excuse the French. A good, honest fellow, and, and God allows him to be cursed by the devil. A test of character, perhaps. Oh, definitely. Just a very stern test, I'd say. And the poor fellow lost everything. His entire family. Ah, but God blessed his perseverance with a new family. Well, I hardly think that makes up for the lost one. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a very good point. It's always been a book which fascinates me. He takes everything that's thrown at him, all for the glory of God. Aye, he, he does that. Makes us wonder why we mourn about anything, really. Just look at poor old Job. They do say God moves in mysterious ways, after all. Indeed they do. Good gosh, you've drunk that tea already. Another cup? Why not? I'm rather enjoying our little theological chat. <laughs> Lemon up to you in thin slices, all right? Always works with tea to cure a cold. Ah! Oh! Bloody bollocking knife. You're okay. I cut my bloody finger, haven't I? Oh. Fine, what's the matter? It's the blood. Oh, don't tell me a little bit of blood makes you queasy. Oh, that's right. Well, you better stop looking then, because it's bleeding like a bugger. Oh, excuse the French. I don't suppose you've got any plasters handy, have you? Uh, no. Oh, i better go home and get this plastered up then. I'll wash the tea towel. Are you sure you're all right? I'm fine. All right, I'll be off then. I'll leave the shopping for you, dear. Cheerio! Hello. Hey, oh, I'm talking to you. So I was miles away. You okay? You look like shit. Got a, got a blast of cold. You must be the, uh, the new reverend. That's right, and you are? The landlord, Harold Hicks. Nice to meet you, Mr. Hicks. Harold will do just fine, son. How did you know I was the reverend? That, uh, that nosy old cow, Mrs. Jenkins, uh, she's inside playing dominoes and, uh, she said you was feeling a little bit off colour. You know, you should, uh, you should watch that nosy old cow. She's, uh, 
She knows around all your business, and boy, can that old lady talk. I'm sure I can cope. Trust me. Can I uh, offer you a small tip on the house, of course? Maybe another time. I uh, need to get some fresh air. Yeah. And uh, if you're travelling north, then uh, you'll end up in the country. South, you'll end up on the estate. And uh, a word of advice. If you want some peace and quiet, then I suggest you just travel. Okay. Thanks. Nice to meet you. And you. Maybe uh, we can have that tipple one day. Reverend. Hello. Hello? Who is this? Look, I can hear you breathing. Come on, it's late. Either talk to me or stop wasting my time. It's me. The reference. Which one, son? I know quite a few. A new one. From the village. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Alex. Don't worry about it. What's the matter, son? There was this dog. A dog? Yes. I pet a dog. A dog bit you. No. Oh, not exactly. It attacked me. But I stabbed it. You stabbed it? That's right. It's not just the hat. And what is it? I mean, there's a lot of dark stuff happening here. It's not normal. Listen to me, my boy. That's the reason why I sent you there. These villages need a bit of young life. Well, you'll be fine, son. Trust me. Just embrace it. Embrace it. Thanks for listening. Anytime, my boy. Okay. Good night. Where are you heading? Just uh, into the estate. Come on, jump in. I'll give you a lift. I don't mind waiting for a bus. It's fine. Come on, I'm heading that way anyway. Anyway, you'd be standing there all day for a bus. They're never on time. Come on.
I must say you're, uh, you're awfully quiet for a reverend. You used to hear me on a Sunday. Do you mind if I smoke? Not at all. It's your car. <sighs> and, uh, you're really quite young to be a reverend, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess I don't exactly fit the usual cliché. Look, I'm gonna cut the bullshit here. Can I be frank? What do you mean? I mean, can I speak to you man to man? Of course. This village. I've lived in this village longer than you've been alive, laddie. And I like to know things about people that come to my village. Notice how I'm emphasizing on the word my. Oh, uh, yeah, I've noticed. Good. In the estate, it's full of drug addicts, degenerates, poor scumbags. Wanna be fucking gangsters, you name it, they're here. We're on the same page. So far? This little village. It's a lovely little village. A wonderful place to live. Respectful. Do you know why that is? Why what is? Why this tiny little village is just a few miles away from all that naughtiness. And yet it still remains so peaceful. I have no idea. Because nobody fucks with the village. And why's that? Why's what? Why does nobody fuck with this village? Because I own this fucking village and nobody fucks with me. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. Now, I'm not blaming my own trumpet here, but... What goes on on the estate, the business, it is what it is with this village. This lovely little village, it belongs to me. And I want people to know that. I want that status quo. Status quo? Gotcha. Good. Now, do we understand each other, Mr. Reverend? Perfectly. Now, where do you want me to drop you off? I'm looking for an internet cafe. A what? An internet cafe. An internet fucking cafe. What the fuck is the matter with you people, eh? Whatever happened to the handshake? My word is my bond. Here's my hand, here's my heart. What are you guys doing now? What is it? Emails, Facebook, social media. You don't know where one is, sir. Know where one is. My name is Harold Hicks. I fucking own one. Cappuccino and a computer would be good. Oh man, you're a rev. <laughs> That's right. Such a shame. Set any computer and I'll bring you coffee over. Thanks. All done? Yeah, all done, thanks. What do I owe you? 
That'll be 8.40, please. Round it up to an even tenner. Oh, thanks. My pleasure. Take care now. Hey, you don't happen to know where Murphy's Bar is, do you? Yeah, sure. It's next street down. Great. Thanks. Such a shame. I'm not a priest. I'm a reverend. Ah, oh, there's hope yet. There's always hope. See you in church. outside today, isn't it? Been busy today? No. It's the uh, film club here. That's right. All the fucking nut jobs are in that room. Through there. Unbelievable. big fan of the classics. <sighs> what? Well, it's not very often you see a reverend in the estate at this time. Especially at a goth film club, you know what I mean? I know what you mean, but uh, I'm no ordinary reverend. So it seems. Do you uh, fancy grabbing a drink and doing a uh, post-mortem? <sighs> oh, you know what? I've got to work. Why do you want to buy me a drink? Who said anything about me buying you a drink? I'm kidding. <laughs> Come on, I'm, uh, I'm new around here. I don't know anyone. and Well, even a reference gets lonely. Yeah, OK. I've got time for one quick drink. One it is. looks we're getting. What's the attraction? Well, you know, a reverend sitting down having a drink with a... You do know what I do for a living, right? I could guess. Well, if your guess is that I'm on the game, you'd be right. So again, I'm, you know, I'm wondering why someone like you would want to have a drink with someone like me. Someone like you? What do you mean? I mean, a reverend sitting down with a whore. You're looking for some relief as well, is that it? Look, the only kind of relief I'm after is the uh, conversational kind. Secondly, you don't need to justify what you do. I do what I do and you do what you do. Really? Really. What I will say is that if you're after help, there are people out there that can help you. But that's your business and your place to ask. Yeah. Because it's that easy. No, not at all. But there's always an out. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, let's not talk about me. My life 
it's actually pretty boring. <laughs> but you, you're a bit of an enigma, aren't you? You're so overestimating me. No, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure. I mean, you're the first Reverend I've ever met who isn't at least 100 years old. <laughs> 100 years old. I'm not quite there yet. Well, there you go. An enigma. <laughs> Being under 100 makes me an enigma. Well, that and the fact that, you know, you're sitting in a dive of a pub where even the toughest of thugs thinks twice about entering. Ah, uh, but I didn't realise that. Mm. I am new here, remember? Yeah, right, I'll give you that one. Shit. What are you doing, Tracy? Just having a quick drink, baby, that's all. Really? Well, oh, with the Reverend, what, was he a punt with No, just having a chat. Oh, just having a chat? Yeah. What well, fucking pay you to have a chat? Go on. <clears throat> what do you want? You just need to calm down. Look, we were just having a drink, that's all, no harm done. No harm done, is that right? No harm, well, that's all you're fucking wrong. Because while she's standing having a chat with you, Reverend, she's not outside sucking cock and making money for me. Unless, unless you want to compensate me for that, isn't it? Oh, come on, Prince, it's all right. It's all right. No harm done. Just don't, don't hurt him. Oh, just don't hurt him. There is no need to fuck up. Oi, come on, Prince. Calm down. Don't wreck the fucking place. Shut the fuck up, Elvis, before I wreck you. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. Come on, let's go. <laughs> don't get up, cunt. You have got ten seconds to get the fuck out of my pub. What you fucking looking at? Hmm? What are you doing, huh? Prince, just go. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you fucking trying to embarrass me in there? What are you doing? No, no. Fucking embarrassment. So you, you know can't embarrass me. If you do. I will rip your fucking face off. Right. You know what? I, I do I forgive you, Tracy. You know you know why I shout at you? Do you know why I shout at you? Why? Because I'm looking out for you. Because <laughs> you're my girl. You're my girl. Job for you tonight, all right? I want you to uh, fucking love me. <laughs> I want you to look after the big badger. No fucking way, Prince. Hey, hey, no, hey. I'm not doing it with him again. You said, <laughs> even you said I wouldn't have to do it if that's to come again. I don't want to do it. This is slow, yeah? It's too rough. Oh, it's too rough. I don't want, you know what happened last time? Okay. And it really, it really hurt. Oh, no, no. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> right, right. Come on. I don't want to. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want I'll to ask, do it him every game. I'm asking to tone it down. Oh, <laughs> tone it down. Get in the car with Barry now, you're gonna do some special things for him. And then, next time we'll charge him a bit more, okay? Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the fucking car. You're trying to embarrass me, don't you? No, Prince, that's not it. That's nothing to do with you. know that I'd never embarrass you, but I hate it. Fucking great fucking bitch. Do I put a rope over your head? I do, don't I? Do I make sure everything's all right for you? Do you know? Do you know how many slags out there would be quite happy for me to look after them? You yeah, fucking know that? I know, oh, baby. Shh, I get the fucking car. If he wants to fuck you every which way but Sunday, you let him up. If he wants to fuck you in the nose and the ass, he doesn't give a fuck. You should be thankful. You understand me? You understand me? You understand me? Yeah. Okay, 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 good girl. Come on. Get in the car. <laughs> 
Get in the car, yes. baby. Get in the fucking car. Oh, babe. Beautiful. Good car, baby. In the car. It's fingers. What's fingers? Fucking a bit of a mood on the cup. I don't know what it is. Fucking period or some shit, okay? Teach a lesson. Just don't touch the boat race. Have fun. Go, go. Oh, ah! You should have stayed in the bar. Now. Well, it's nice to see a few more faces here since last Sunday. I was beginning to think that a new reverend wasn't welcome in the village. You know, my first week has been a bizarre one indeed. For some reason, I've found myself drawn to the afflictions poor old Job endured. Don't worry, I'm not trying to compare Job's problems with having to move to the village. <laughs> no, seriously. Job, a righteous man. A man who is faithful to what he believes and whose actions carry out convictions of that faith. All in all, a pretty decent chap, I'd say. So what happened? Why did God allow the arch enemy to give him such a hard time? Was it a test? You know, for me, it's a bizarre old book, because this poor man endures so much, and yet not once does he question if God is faithful towards him. It's got me thinking. Dangerous, I know. It's got me thinking about the roads that we take in life. In each of our lives, there is something that comes along that shakes our faith. I mean, really rocks us, makes us question, where is God? And you know what? Sometimes I don't have the answers. There are times when what I see happening doesn't make sense to me or my faith. And then I read the book of Job, and it gives me courage. It gives me strength. For there are things that we do not understand, afflictions which on the surface would appear to afflict our faith. Yet I know through my faith that things are put upon us. They may not make sense. They may even hurt. But I believe they are put there to glorify the name of God. And although we may not like the situations we are in, we have to roll with what is dealt us to glorify God. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Stirring sermon, Reverend. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. <gasps> Joel. <Yeah. laughs> Fabulous. Uh, this is my nephew, Ryan. All right. Nice to meet you, Ryan. He's come to stay with me. My sister's not too well, you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Right. Well, I better go and get the lunch on. Roast lamb, care to join us? Ah, I'd love to, but maybe next week. Oh, yes, next week. All right, then. Shall Take care. On? Come on, Ryan. Can I help you, officer? May I come in? Uh, of course, it's a, uh, it's a public chapel. Chief Inspector Roden. Uh, I'm the... Uh, I guess you're the Reverend. Uh, can I uh, get you a cup of tea? Or... Oh, not for me, thanks. I'm just passing through. Uh, what can I do for you, then? Well, nothing, unless you can tell me the whereabouts of a bloody big dog. Sorry? Oh, a dog up at the farm's gone missing. Bloody nasty thing. That's all I need, an animal on the rampage. Well, anyway, I just wanted to drop in and introduce myself. Any problems? I'm the man to see. This is my village. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, nothing. Then why the smirk? Well, some, somebody else mentioned that to me the other day. What? Well, Mr. Hicks, he said that, uh, well, he said that this was his village. Did he? Well, word of advice, son. If you've got a problem, then come to me. 
me and Hicks do things a little different. Sweet enough after all. To still haven't unpacked then? No, I've been so busy since I arrived. We'll have to get around to it soon though. <laughs> What's the matter? Let me help you, Tracy. <laughs> you can't help you. Maybe I can't, but surely it's worth finding out. It's Prince, my... Your pimp. <sighs> it's okay, you can talk to me. <laughs> He's gone missing. Missing? You were with him last night? Yeah, after that. How can you be so sure he's missing? It's only been a few hours. Trust me, he's missing. He had work lined up. Whenever it comes to making money, he's not far. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Why do you care? He looks after me. No, he, he... doesn't. <laughs> what do you know? You're just a fucking reverend. You don't have to live this life. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you seem to be in some discomfort. Why don't you tell me what happened? Can I smoke? Thank you. What did that bastard do to you? Same as all of them. Fucked me. Only this one. He likes a little bit more than that. This guy, though. His sadistic side runs after he's had his fix. Who did this to you, Tracy? What does it matter? Why don't you go and take a bath and then have a lie down in the bed? It's okay, you're safe here. Tell me who did this to you first. His name is Baza. He runs the scrapyard down the estate. He lives in a caravan on the yard. Please don't call the police. I'm not going to call the police.
Don't do it. Where are we? In the beginning? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. This apple. What apple? It's only dangerous if you allow it to be. But the apple? Not everything is as it seems, Reverend. You're naked. What you have, maybe it's a blessing or maybe a curse. However, whatever it is, it's a mandate you are carrying out. Don't allow the responsibility to cloud your judgment. Cloud my judgment? Yes. You enjoy it tonight more than you should possibly have. Judgment, it's not personal. Sleepyhead. <laughs> Morning. I had a shower, is that okay? Of course. Make yourself at home. What time is it? Almost eight. You want toast? Sure. What about you? I slept well for the first time in months. Good. But... But what? Prince. He's gone. Sit down. What do you mean, Reverend? Butcher toast. Forget the bloody toast. What do you mean? He's gone. Sorry. While you were asleep, I went out. Where? To this state. Oh, God, why? To ask some questions. What do you mean? Well, I found out what happened to Prince. Uh, um, and but, he's gone. Uh, what do you mean, he's gone? Look, I don't know why or how. But you know a guy like Prince, he's obviously made some enemies. Who told you this? Numerous people. But look, what matters is that he's gone and he is not coming back. Are you sure? One hundred percent. Thank you so much. Hey, I just asked some questions. No. Whatever you did, my life is so much better after I met you and... But I, I don't know how to... I, I, I don't even know what to say. Just eat your toast.
Gentlemen. Been having a party, have we? Oh, <laughs> very funny. So? So what? So what the fuck happened? Where's Big Bazza? How the hell should I know? Help me out here, Inspector. You and your guys are supposed to police this estate, yes? And you work in the sea, Detective, so why are you here? I am here because Big Bazza is an informant of mine, okay? And I need to speak to him. But I show up here, this place is trash, Big Bazza's gone, and you and your guys have got their thumb up their ass with no clue what's happening. Well, you'll have to forgive me, but whatever Baz was doing for the city doesn't concern me. And as for this mess, I've only just seen it. So, if that'll be all, gentlemen, I'll be going. I'll send a constable down to investigate. You know what? You and your men are a joke. You know that, don't you? You're not in control of anything. You're standing there in uniform. You might as well be a fucking postman. I don't need telling them about our problems. Fuck you. Especially from a greasy city slicker who's as bent as the crooks. I'll be leaving now. Ta ta. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mind me staying? Not at all. It's just for a little bit, you know, it's just while well, I figure out what I'm going to do. No worries. We might talk. We might talk. Going somewhere, Tracy? Yeah. Out of this dump. Not back to work. Who was that? Someone very evil. She makes Baza look like a saint. How's things? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. I, uh, I thought you were staying in the village now. Yeah, I've just been seeing my mum in hospital. Oh, is she? Not so good. Sorry to see her back. I've been meaning to see you. Where you been, Ryan? You're too good for us now, are you? No, it's just me mum. She's ill. Yeah, well, come on. Get in the car. We're off to find someone to wind up. Don't need to go, Ryan. Why don't you come back to the village with us on the bus? I'm waiting, Ryan. Come on. Unless you're not one of the boys. All right, let's go. Mr. Hicks. Didn't I tell you to call me Harold? OK. Harold, what can I do for you? Well, I've uh, heard a little rumour. Right, and what's that? That uh, you, uh, you have a little house guest. That's right. Tracy the Tramp. Don't call her that. Ooh. Now listen to me, Mr. Reverend. I don't like to get involved in people's businesses, but that little tramp friend of yours, Tracy, she's an employee of somebody who works for me. All right? And who would that be? Come on. Don't play dumb. Don't act like you don't know. You gave him a little bit of bother in one of my bars. It's not exactly what happened. Whatever, that's not important. What is important is that when you gave him that little bit of bother, the next day he disappears and uh, the little tramp, who's his employee, no, 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 my employee now, turns up at your house. Don't you find that a little bit odd? Listen, Mr. Hicks. I don't know what happened to Mr. Prince. As for Tracy, she's free to come and go as she pleases. She's answerable to no one. Not myself, not Prince, not even you. Are you fucking listen to me, boy? You're skating on thin ice here. 
Right. What goes on in that estate is my fucking business. Okay? Now you be a good little reverend and just concentrate on your chapel. Okay? Now there's a good boy. Bye bye. Wait, wait, leave me alone. Please, please, stop. Stop. Please, God, help me. Do you repent of your sins? Yes, yes, I repent. Of course I repent. Yes, I fucking repent. I hope for your sake you do. It's God. okay. I forgive you. You do? Thank God. It's okay. Oh, thank God. Come away from them and you think to yourself, well, how did it get to that, to that point? And that's when I, I've actually found a number of the stories in here very useful because what they do is they've made me open my eyes to different ways of looking at things. For example, um, there's many powerful passages in this book. Uh, one in particular um, story has really kind of got me um, thinking. And, seen Ryan, have you? I was meant to meet him here earlier and he just well, he hasn't showed up. Right, well, look, it haven't come from me, right? But he's doing some work with X tonight on that boxing show. Boxing? The unlicensed thing he's doing in the barn is a bare knuckle thing. It's not good, mate. Not good at all. Mrs. Jenkins Ryan. That's the boy. That's the lad. Inspector! <laughs> oh, what can I do for you, Reverend? Well, I was wondering if you could help me with a little query. Go on. Well, I was wondering why you, the uh, local police chief, is turning a blind eye to the biggest crook in miles. What are you talking about? Come on. Everyone knows Hicks is dodgy and you, you do nothing. Nothing at all. You have no idea what you're talking about, Reverend. <laughs> no idea whatsoever. I suggest you keep your nose out of Hicks's business. He isn't someone you want to mess with. What's the matter, Inspector? You on his payroll? I'd never take anything off that man. But everyone else does. I'm not a fool, you know. I know Hicks is an evil bastard. But unless there is evidence, what can I do? Evidence? Illegal boxing tonight. Did you know about that? Hicks is behind it. How do you know about that? I hear things. You know, don't you? You know, and you're going to do nothing about it. Nothing at all. It's not that simple, isn't it? He's got some pretty powerful people on his side. Oh. I know tonight isn't just about boxing. There's some people coming over for business, but there's nothing I can do. Unless I actually catch him in the act, there is nothing I can do. I suggest you stay out of it. And believe you me, trust me on that. 
nothing you can do. Let's finish this. Legendary Viking has arrived. Yes. You got the money, yes? Yes, I have the money, but you have the merchandise. Yeah, but before we do that, let's let's get it on. <laughs> let's uh, get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on, okay. Uh, tell me, my friend, uh, tell me, my friend, why after all the money we've made together that you're still doing these silly fights? It's all about the uh, thrill! <laughs> of the battle. Mm. So, Harry, who have you found me? It's uh, Harold, Harold Hicks, not Harry. And uh, I handpicked someone myself. Yeah. He's known as the Brute. But I do hope we can, uh, I hope we can still conclude our bit of business once he's dealt with you. Hmm? Great. And uh, I must say, Mr. Viking, I do find your boots highly amusing. <laughs> <laughs> Und die kommen hier Spider and Sigte Zina. Yes, exactly. Um, bloody foreigners. Come on, chaps. Good luck. Good evening. Everybody, clear! Out! Now! Get out! Now! Come on! Get no, out! Out! Go! Out! out. Move it! More jacket! No! Just a small sleep, right? Harry, side bed. Run! Run! 
Cheek, Reverend. Good night's work. When did you get here? About uh, 30 seconds ago. You, um, you left the door unlocked. You've been busy then? Sorry? You've been busy. With what? Well, with the work of God, of course. Well, don't look so worried. You've done a hell of a job. I have? Mm. Of course you have. The church has been full, so I've been told. By who? Inspector Rodin. Good friend of mine, the inspector. He also tells me that you've been getting a little um, passionate about the local villains. Yes, well... Uh... <laughs> I picked you for this place, personally. I just um, had a feeling about you. And now the chapel is full after only a few months. I knew you were the man for the job. Thank you. And now it's time to move on. What do you mean? Well, your work here is done. I want you in the city from now on. But I... <laughs> it's over. I'll see you in the city. There are police everywhere tonight. Apparently the local barman was murdered. I had a quick chat with Inspector Rodin. He tells me that without a murder weapon, they will be none the wiser as to who did it. Leave everything neat and tidy, Reverend. You've done a smashing job so far. Don't leave anything unattended for long. Good night.
that she is on fire In her eyes I see her desire It's the truth cause I ain't no liar When I touch her it makes her feel higher So hot just like a flame I'm hoping she might even want to bet on my name No swagging, dropping that playing game She's the fuel to my fire, she drives me insane Setting of the evening sun I'll make sure all your hurt is done Cause I remember you When you didn't care I remember you in the garden Just standing there God, I'm just a killer for Everything I doubt, I lay to waste. Everything you want of me and more. Have you seen my face before? 
And I remember you When you didn't care I remember you in the garden Just standing there Didn't care. I remember you in the garden. 